Hello, hi everyone. What is really good, my dudes? Today is May 4th, 2021. Got another RuneScape update for y'all. Today we see the release of the Divination update that we talked about last week. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Let's go. Alright guys, before we get into the main game update, I do want to mention that it is double XP live right now. It started out yesterday and will be going on until May 24th. So you have until then to use up 48 hours of double XP as you see fit. Like previous double XP live events, you have a pause timer so you can choose exactly when you are utilizing that 48 hours of double XP. Do note that it being the 24th of May when it ends means it is 20 days long, 10 days long longer than you would typically have these double XP live events. So with that said, we're going to jump into today's game update, which is the improvements to the divination skill. So there have been a plethora of changes to the core training of the skill. Starting off, we have a change to the wisp wander range. Now they will only wander up to five tiles away from the rift. Spring duration has also been fixed and increased. Each spring will have a fixed time of 60 seconds. Any additional players that hop onto a Wisp will increase the timer by 15 seconds, up to a maximum of 75 extra seconds. This duration is displayed with a progress bar above each spring. They have also introduced Critical Chance when gathering. Gives you the chance to score an enriched memory. This can go over 100%. For example, at 150%, you'll gain one enriched memory and have a 50% chance to net a second one. They have also added a brand new mechanic to rifts known as memory overflow this is a brand new buff that triggers when you and a few other people contribute enough chronicle fragments to the rift you can right click and hit the empower button when you have some chronicles in your inventory to empower it once enough people have added enough chronicles a buff will trigger giving everybody in the area a plus one base energy from depositing memories five percent more xp from depositing memories ten percent higher crit chance and it spawns an enriched wisp which boosts your crit chance by 100%. This mechanic actually replaces the enriched wisps which used to spawn every 20 minutes. Chronicle fragments have had to change themselves. They will now spawn next to you and remain immobile. If you are paying attention and you grab a chronicle fragment within 6 seconds of it spawning, you'll get an enriched chronicle which gives more XP and more progress towards overloading the energy rift. They have also added a couple of new things to the production side of the skill a new sign of the porter seven has been introduced as the new highest tier sign in porter this will require 99 divination incandescent energies and a dragonstone necklace and holds 50 porter charges the previous high tier six has been moved down to 94 divination requiring luminous energies instead they've added a couple of new transmutations for both fish and ore for fish you can now transmute sharks, sea turtle, cave fish, manta ray, and rock tail from lower tier fish, and ores you can now transmute luminites, or calcite, draculith, necrite, phasmatite, bane, and light and dark anamica from lower tier ores. There are a bunch of other noteworthy changes for various different divination related things. The skill cape will boost a spring's duration by 30 seconds, one time per spring, and it does not stack with the ethereal connection from Memorial to Guthics. Ethereal connection does the same thing as the cape, again does not stack with one another. Fading memories retain all their current effects, except the duration increase, instead they will now provide 20% crit. Elite Divination Outfit has a 5% chance to grant 100% crits. The Elder Divination has a 7% chance. Prison of Dowsing grants a 5% crit chance with nearby it. The Chronicle Absorption spell, instead of absorbing a Chronicle, will now automatically pick it up for you, providing an enriched Chronicle. And the Spirit Attraction Potion works just like that as well. Finally, the Abyssal Transit, Memorial to Guthix perk. Chronicles can now always be offered from your inventory. However, Abyssal Transit will 
double the progress towards overloaded energy rifts if you drop them off to the rift instead. So that is it for all the changes with today's update regarding divination. With that we're going to now shift on over to the patch notes and see what else has been added with today's update. Starting off we got some graphical fixes. Fix the visual issue with a chimney in the yeti town. A tree in the wilderness is no longer floating and now blocks players correctly. Flatten some uneven ground in the werewolf agility course. A rare double tree by the tree of balance has been de-doubled. Fix the minor wall issues from some buildings in Varrock that were causing certain elements to appear detached from the wall. The windows in the Varrock Museum are now all aligned. Fix a graphical issue with the well in Lumbridge Swamp. And fix the minor graphical issue with the model of the Lorehound Pet. Moving on, a couple of archaeology fixes. Using the fill and inspect options on the ore box will no longer interrupt actions and time sprites will no longer disappear when inside Bandos's Sanctum. Having a look at mobile changes, they deployed a new style for the top level of the mobile beta. There are new assets for the top level icons that match the style used in the desktop clients. Buttons that open new screens or overlays and buttons that toggle something on the top level are now distinguished by a disc under the icon. Icons in the top left are now arranged horizontally. The mini map has been moved to the bottom right which makes interacting with the surrounding buttons easier when the device is held landscape and they fixed an issue that could cause the mobile store to appear off center if opened via treasure hunter moving on to some other improvements bank pins are now required to open the oddman store the monkey archer is now unable to move beyond its platform you must now use the enter key to confirm changes to any values on a grand exchange offer various hats including the duelist cap will now display correctly when worn with the rise and walk animation override the range check for the the bash ability now uses the right hand. Fixed an issue which caused the clan chat lobby to present a logout modal when typing. Fixed an issue that was preventing undead trolls from dropping loot which resulted in a script error. It's now possible to activate a new skilling urn when no other urns of the same type are in use. Teleporting to the bandit camp lodestone no longer shows a config name for your previous destination. The game world is now responsive when the escape menu is open. Salty players retain their salty title but between sessions. A chat message will appear whenever a player is unable to transmogrify. Players will no longer be able to transmogrify while playing the heist minigame or while actively hunting during the big game hunter activity, sitting on the completionist throne, or taking part in PvP duels. The hot sand walk animation no longer frees your undead chicken from its sack. The graphical flickering in the Sears Village smithing workshop no longer occurs. Fixed a minor issue with the animation on the Muspa point grapple shortcuts. Items no longer float when dropped in between the second and third forge on the north of the artisan's workshop. You can now no longer walk on lava near the ZMI altar. Exiting the keyboard input UI at the Grand Exchange no longer causes keybinds to stop functioning. Corrected an issue where Crispy the Cabbage from Gower Quest could fail to return to the Gower farm if destroyed from your bank. Selecting cancel while selecting a skill in the effigy star interface no longer causes causes a logout. Enhanced Excalibur will now continue healing after teleporting. The Lumbridge Sage will now get the hint at the end of the conversation if you say I'm fine for now, thanks. And finally, we have some hot fixes that went live throughout the week. New players no longer receive login messages about automatic daily challenge extensions while in tutorials. Escaping Bork early with a free play will no longer cost the daily play as well. And both Iron Men and regular players will now be able to interact with their allotted number of evil trees each day. That is it for your patch notes. Links to everything discussed in this video will be down in the description below. Head on over there and check them out. With that, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Because I appreciate you watching. I'm out. Aloha.